To me, Gears of War 3 is an epic, intense, action-packed monster of a game. And I use the word monster deliberately there because almost every second of gameplay in this game is spent battling a bunch of truly horrifying creatures from both the Locust Horde and the Lambent. They come in all different shapes and sizes and they are absolutely terrifying. Just look at these guys, they will give you nightmares. And while it's extremely satisfying to take out wave after wave of enemies with your trusty lancer chainsaw combo, this is more than just your average third person cover based shooter game. It's filled with characters who have deep, complex backstories and relationships with one another, with an emotional and at times gut wrenching storyline which spans over a number of games in the series. As many of you will know, Gears of War 3 is seen as the climatic finale of a critically acclaimed trilogy of games for the Xbox 360. But for me personally, this was my introduction to the series and quite possibly an introduction into my favourite video game franchise of all time. Hello, my name is Owen from Cultholic Wrestling and today I will be talking about what Gears of War 3 means to me. Phoenix, Santiago and Stratton report to CIC immediately. Yeah. I heard you the first time. So my first experience with the game actually came when I was visiting a friend's house during secondary school. Now at this time, I only had a PlayStation 3, I didn't actually own an Xbox 360, but my friend, he did have an Xbox at his house, which also meant he had this huge library of games, none of which I had ever played before. I remember specifically he showed me Halo Reach, and for some reason, Kane and Lynch 2 Dog Days sticks out in my memory. I don't even know if that was an Xbox exclusive, it probably wasn't, but I never played it before that visit. But none of these games that he showed me really interested me all that much, I kind of just sat back and watched him play. But as soon as he booted up Gears of War 3 and started playing Horde mode, it immediately piqued my interest. I can't remember if my friend only had one controller at the time, or whether I was just too afraid to embarrass myself at these games which I'd never played before, and the latter is probably more likely there. So for the most part, I did just sit back and watch, but when he started playing Horde mode, I immediately just found myself asking for the controller so I could give it a go for myself. I can't quite put my finger on what stood out to me so much at the time that made me really want to give this game a go. Maybe it was the impressive graphics or the absolute sheer amount of mayhem and carnage that was happening on the screen as he took on a bunch of Locust and Lambent. But I will always remember when I finally got the controller in my hands and gave the game a go for myself, I absolutely fell in love with the gameplay. Because before playing Gears of War 3 for the first time, I had never really played a shooter game which focused its entire combat system around cover based mechanics, so it was all fairly new and fairly fresh to me at this point. I can specifically remember struggling to figure out when was the perfect time to pop in and out of cover before I would eventually always, and this happened a lot, get taken down by an enemy, uh, eventually bleed out and die, but then, you know, rinse and repeat, I would start over again, keep playing, and eventually after a couple of attempts, I started to get the hang of things. I even started to perfectly time the active reload mechanic. Yes, I am a professional gamer, everyone. Even though it's a very simple mechanic to learn, you just press RB and, you know, the gun reloads for you, but I was, I was very proud of myself, okay? So a couple hours later, it was finally time for me to head home, and I enjoyed my first exposure to Gears of War so much that by this point I had already come to the conclusion that this was a game which I just had to keep on playing. Especially after my friend had told me that this game actually has a campaign mode which has such an amazing story and it's even better than the Horde mode which we were just spending the last few hours playing together. I got home that day and I was so I was so so excited to tell my mom all about this new game which I had spent the day playing with my friend and with Christmas coming up she even asked if this was something I wanted as a present of the big man in the big red suit Father Christmas himself. But then I explained to her that this wasn't a game which you could just pick up and play for the PlayStation 3, it was only available on the console that my friend had over at his house the Xbox 360. 
and after that it wasn't really mentioned again with my mum and I don't even remember going back to my friend's house to play the game between this point and Christmas but my mum, she's a sneaky little devil, she, she must have sent a letter over to Father Christmas just for me because that year on Christmas morning I unwrapped a big box and inside was an Xbox 360 with my very own copy of Gears of War 3. I was over the moon, I was so, so happy, and thankfully, these were the days when you didn't have huge update files to download for your new game before you could eventually start playing it. So it didn't take long for me at all that Christmas morning to plug in my brand new Xbox, pop the disc in, and jump headfirst into the wonderful, immersive, but pretty dark world of Gears of War 3. Come on, Dom. Armor up. I've got crops to take care of. If we don't grow it, we don't eat it, remember? I think the radishes can cope without you for a while. I would say that Geezer Wolf 3 did come at a pretty significant time in my life because it completely changed how I viewed video games. More specifically, it made me realize that video games can be played to experience a more engaging, complex story, a bit like a movie rather than something that I would just pick up and play for a few hours after school before eventually going back to watching, you know, wrestling on TV or playing football or just doing something else that would take my mind off of schoolwork. I would have been around 13 or 14 years old when I first started playing Gears of War 3, which, yes, I know is probably still too young to be playing a game where you could charge into battle with your chainsaw bayonet blazing and brutally tearing through a bunch of lambent drones before they eventually explode emulsion all over you causing you to almost die in the process so please don't tell the gaming police on me but yes at this age around 13 or 14 i only really played games that were associated to my two favorite hobbies which were football and watching professional wrestling so i would only really get the annual you know smackdown versus raw release or the annual fifa release i wouldn't really play anything else in my spare time at this point, I would have been in secondary school, which is always a very daunting time for any kid. You know, you're going into this much bigger school, you've got to make new friends with all these kids that you've never met before, and for me personally, the friends that I made in secondary school were a lot more into their video games than I was growing up. And while we had a lot of other things in common, a lot of our conversations were based around games, and mostly the games that they played growing up as a kid, but also new releases, and because I was kind of out of the loop with games, I never really knew what they were talking about. I will always remember the year that Skyrim was first released on consoles. I believe that was in 2011, and it was the absolute talk of the town in my school. Everybody was playing it, everyone was saying it was the best game ever, they were all talking about it, and I was just kind of the odd one out at this point. And the same thing happened up to the release of Gears of War 3, but again, because I didn't have an Xbox 360, I just kind of tuned out to all that talk. But after playing Gears of War 3 for the first time, it really got the ball rolling for me in terms of experiencing a whole other side of video games, specifically more narrative-driven games that I had never played before. After eventually completing Gears of War 3, I would then move on to complete the original Gears of War trilogy, which then led to me completing even more narrative-based games like the Uncharted games, The Last of Us Part 1, Bioshock, the Batman Arkham games, and probably so many others that I played during my teenage years. Playing all of these games led to me building stronger friendships with my mates in secondary school and these are friends that I am still super close to to this very day. And over the years we would go on to have countless game nights together and LAN parties playing so many random wacky games but a lot of these game nights also did include Gears of War 3 which is why looking back I do think it's fair to say that this game came into my life at a very important time. Oh, and Sergeant Phoenix, you'll want to see this. This better not be a shopping list. Let's go check it out. Definitely, I can think of two specific moments in the game where it clicked for me, but the first one may be considered a bit of a cop-out answer, so I apologize for that, but basically, I absolutely love the entire first act of this game. That's because it puts you straight into the thick of things, starting off on the SMV Sovereign ship, which suddenly becomes under severe attack from the Lambent after you accidentally enter Lambent infested waters. 
After working your way through the ship, trying to take out as many Lambents as you possibly can before eventually escaping on a bunch of Raven helicopters, the ship then, out of nowhere, just begins to be ripped apart by this huge Leviathan. Just look at the size of this thing, it's absolutely terrifying. This then builds up to the first boss fight of the game, where you take on the Lambent Leviathan head on. And while it's not the most difficult boss fight in the world, for me, it's certainly a memorable one. It showed me just how unpredictable Gears of War was in terms of the enemies that you face, and it always kept me guessing on what big, disgusting, emulsion-spitting creatures you might pop up against next. So while I was completing my first playthrough of the game from this point, I had no idea what to expect next, so this first act does such a great job setting the tone. Another big moment of the game where it did really click for me is actually pretty spoiler heavy, so if you've never played Gears of War 3 before and you don't want any story elements of the game spoiled for you right now, maybe just skip ahead a minute or two. But it would be very remiss of me not to mention that cutscene about halfway through this game with Dominic Santiago. With this being my entry point into the series, I wasn't fully aware of Dom's tragic backstory, but the passing of his wife Maria and their children is referred to throughout the campaign, so I had somewhat of an understanding of what Dom was going through emotionally and mentally, but I was not expecting to see the heroic sacrifice he makes in order to save his best friend Marcus and the rest of the squad who appear to be in a no-win situation after being overrun by a bunch of locusts and lambent. Everything about this moment is put together so beautifully in order to create such a perfect, emotional scene. From the background music, to the voice acting, to the use of slow motion to show the impact of the explosion, and then the reaction from Marcus Phoenix once he realises that his best friend Dom has sacrificed himself in order to save him. It's all just so impactful. For me, this has to go down as one of the saddest, most emotional, gut-wrenching moments in gaming, and that's why looking back I can definitely pinpoint watching this scene for the first time and realising that I was playing something so very special. Baby, we got a grandstand view. We're crossing the bridge right above the ship. Any way you can kill this thing from where you are? Uh, putting this on typically? We need to blow his brains out of his ass! What's my favourite part of the game? Well, I wish I could just say everything because I absolutely love this game, but that is probably going to be classed as cheating, so I'll try and narrow things down just a little bit. The first thing I would say is that I absolutely adore the gameplay. I know that the third-person cover-based combat system may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I absolutely loved it when I played Gears of War 3 for the first time. Maybe it was because it was so different to anything else I had ever played up to that point, or maybe it was the fact that it made me think, uh, think about things a bit more strategically during combat. It made everything a bit more tactical, trying to figure out the perfect time to duck in and out of cover to dodge oncoming fire or to time a perfect reload, and also your enemies use the exact same cover-based mechanics as you do in the game, so at times they are hiding under cover and sometimes it's a bit of a waiting game trying to figure out who's going to pop out of cover first, and eventually when the enemy does that means you can spring out, get your sniper rifle, and get a lovely little headshot on a bunch of locusts. Speaking of which, I think the weapons in the game deserve a worthy mention here because although Gears of War as a series doesn't have as many weapons to choose from as other shooter games, I think the ones here really do stand out to me as some of the best that I've ever used in a game. Of course, there's the most popular weapon in the series, which is the Lancer Assault Rifle with its chainsaw bayonet, but there's also the Retro Lancer and the Sword Off Shotgun, the Nasher Shotgun, the One Shot Sniper Rifle, the Long Shot Sniper Rifle. There's all these different weapons, and they all have their own strengths and weaknesses. I think there's a real good variety of weapons here to choose from, and they all provide a deadly but satisfying way of dealing with your opponent in a variety of different ways. And in between all of the brutal action pieces throughout the game, then there's the cinematic cutscenes which are used to tell such an outstanding story. The pacing throughout the game is perfect, shifting from adrenaline pumping gameplay to a sometimes light-hearted, but more often than not, emotional, dramatic piece of storytelling. The dialogue between characters creates this real sense of camaraderie and relatability, and it really creates this us-against-them mentality, so straight from the off I was rooting for all of these gears, to make it through to the other side of this battle for humanity in one piece. Also, I think for its time, the graphics during both cutscenes and gameplay were absolutely gorgeous. Everything about this game looks fantastic, from character models and animations, 
to the dark, gritty, almost completely destroyed world that is Planet Sera. And also a quick mention for the online modes in Gears of War 3. You can complete the campaign story in co-op mode or with a group of up to four players online, which is actually a really fun way to experience the game. But then there is this whole host of other game modes for multiplayer, with my favourite one being Beast Mode. This is basically a role reversal of Horde Mode, where you play as the Locust and try to wipe out a group of human survivors in waves. I don't know why me and my friends had such a good time playing as the Locust, but it was it was a good laugh trying to work out how each different Locust behaved and acted and moved and the weapons that they used, and there was a wide variety of Locusts to choose from. You could start off with a small ticker and eventually work your way up to playing as a massive grenade launching boomer to destroy the enemies. Basically, there's so much fun to be had in this game, and there's so many different game modes that you can pick and choose from to play with friends and have a good time. Oh, bad. Look, that house over there. I can see us, you and me. Couple of kids, a dog. Yeah, a great big bottle of suicide pills. Well, that'll save me poisoning your dinner. So, in total, I've played through the campaign of Gears of War 3 on three separate occasions, with my initial playthrough coming on that Christmas day, which I believe was in 2012, when I got the game as a Christmas present. With this being my starting point in the series, once I completed the game for the first time, my curiosity was piqued and I had so many unanswered questions going through my head. Like how did this glowing, yellowy emulsion stuff found beneath the planet's surface eventually result in the creation of the Locust Horde and their mutated counterparts the Lambent? And why is there a freeway battle going on here between humanity, Locust and Lambent? What, what's happening here? I also wanted to discover more about the COG as a whole, especially the game's main protagonist, Marcus Phoenix, and his relationship with squad mates Dom, Coltrane, Bird, Anya, and his long-lost father, Adam Phoenix. So with all of these questions going through my head, I then went back and completed the first two installments of the series, Gears of War 1 and 2, which then led me to completing the third game for a second time, which made me appreciate it even more. And the last time I played Gears of War 3, I believe would have been in 2016, just prior to the release of Gears 4. But even though it's been a number of years since I picked up a controller and played Gears of War 3, it still left such a lasting impact on me, to the point where if anyone asks me what my favourite video game is of all time, this will always be mentioned in the top 1 or 2. This game truly is what got me to appreciate the art of video games, and just talking about it today makes me want to jump back into its chaotic world again soon. Anyone got a pump and some duct tape? I hate those chompers. Little creeps can't leave anything alone. Ugh. Yeah, imagine rooting around looking for parts all the time. Hey, I make intelligent use of free resources. That's how come we're still alive to bitch about it. I would happily recommend this game to anyone who is a fan of shooter games in general because on its surface, Gears of War 3 is an excellent cover-based shooter set in a fascinating, gritty, dystopian world where you can kill as many big ugly groups as you like and have a great time doing it, all the while saving humanity like the hero you are. But underneath all of the gore and explosions and action, there is then this amazing story, which for me, is the main selling point of this game. So why not grab a controller, sit back, relax, and let yourself be fully immersed into the world of Gears of War. And that is what Gears of War 3 means to me.